have you ever opened up your factory talk HMI application and seen this window right here right so it's telling you basically notifying you that uh, legacy alarm HMI tag alarms will no longer be used after factory talk 10 they will still be accepted and used on factory talk 10 but when you're moving forward to factory talk 12 or above they will no longer be used what they want you to do is utilize this this tool right here and actually go ahead and move those to a alarms and event structure now I'm going to show you how to do that in this video in a very short easy way again they do have a link right here you can click on to actually show you how to do this but it does leave a lot uh, in my opinion it leaves a lot to interpret when it comes to actually doing that right it's not so straightforward so I'm going to give you a straightforward method all right so we're going to basically click OK um, we know you know we actually have one of those HMI alarms in our systems I actually added that just to give you this instance so uh, what they're talking about is HMI tags right here they're talking about your tags uh, that you have an alarm in their tags right so you're using the legacy tag alarm so we'll pop up in that and I'll show you that you can see I have this alarm in here right and I'm it's under my HMI tags and there that's no longer going to be supported after factory talk 10 so meaning fact talk 12 or above it's no longer going to work uh, so what do you do about that I'll show you real quick we're going to go ahead and utilize this tool uh, so this right here we're going to convert and you see in my uh, Explorer over here my application Explorer I don't have an alarms and events tag server so if you go over here and you you were to add something right go to server I don't have an a tag um, a tag and alarms and events server right I don't have that so you can see I don't have the factory talk AE in that system but I, we're going to add that here in a second first but we need to actually convert this tag over right so let's actually go over to our our folder and we're going to go to our um, HMI well let's just go to program so we're going to go to your Rockwell software you're going to navigate to Rockwell software you're going to go over to factory talk view um, and this is going to be I'm in the instance of what we're doing right here I'm showing you this in factory talk 10 you can do this in fact talk 12 if you've already migrated up so no worries you can still do this and save your application but you should have done this beforehand so please if you're seeing that window go ahead and be proactive and do it just like I'm doing it right now in fact talk 10 um, so in tools right here you're going to go to factory talk view alarm migration tool okay now there's a couple instances in here where if you've already you know um, did you know converted your are you already um, you know exported your HMI tags in here you can utilize these two bottom methods um, I'm gonna show you how to do this if you haven't done that yet so the very top two right here are export uh, one to XML or export to Excel we're going to use the uh, let's just use the Excel for now and then we're going to go ahead so we're going to you can use either one it doesn't matter both of these two up, up top the export HMI alarms to factory talk alarms and events tag based alarms all you're doing is using whatever format you want to use either XML or either Excel we're going to use Excel on this okay so we're going to pick our project at this point okay we're going to go to my batching station project we're going to come over here to our batching station SED. Okay, so make sure you go and do your .SED, which is your application. It's going to automatically populate this to a set location. Okay, so you currently see I have that set location popped up right here. Right, that set location. I have that location popped up right here. You can see that. Okay the SE right here and it's going to give it a name called factory talk batch uh, uh, batching station uh, FT AE alarms and events export so you'll see this populate in here right so now it's actually exported that in there so now I just wanted to show you that it has been exported and I'm, I can open it up and check it out if I want to um, let's just open this up now I um, actually I don't have Microsoft activated on this computer so or this VM so let's not <laughs> check it but you can check it if you do have uh, XML you know our um, Excel opened right okay so now we have this tool right we have our converted tag let's go ahead and add this in our system now we're gonna go ahead and go to our 
HMI application right here and we're going to go to the top and we're going to go to add server and we're going to get basically go right here it says tag alarm event server and I'm going to call this a, uh, FTAE very simple very easy to understand I'm not using any redundancy uh, I'll go ahead and throw in priorities just because we're going to set the priorities here in just a second okay so now I have my FT view AE right here but I don't have any tags right so if I open this up there's no tags in there right the server is connected because we just built it obviously but there's no tags in here so how do we get the tag in there it's very simple you're gonna come over here and you're gonna go to import export okay so we're gonna import import from your file format whatever file format you chose before if you chose Excel which we did we chose Excel we're gonna choose Excel if you chose the other format which is XML you want to choose XML at this point okay so we're gonna to go to next and we're gonna to go to our file location which is our PC and we're gonna to go to our file location which is users and then we're gonna to go to public I'm going to go to documents, RSView Enterprise, SE, HMI Applications, pick our HMI application, and then we're going to go to the file that it gave us. Okay, this is the file we just made. Now we're going to click next. At this point, we can update. We have the ability to update existing or cre and create new ones. You can import only the new ones and skip all the existing ones. You can delete or you can import only the alarms. At this point, I like to personally use the update um, and create new ones. You can just you know, come over here and import new ones, whatever the case may be. By default, I usually go by the first one, but again, it's completely up to your situation. If you already have some in there, it may be a safer route to go ahead and just import the ta the new new tag alarms definitions right and skip all the rest of them that you currently have in your system so if you have already some, something already built it may be a better instance that you go ahead and use the second one i'm going to use the first one okay so we're going to go ahead and do that it's converting it successfully added that in into the system so now if i go to my ftv or ftae and i go to my alarms and event setup open up that you can see that I have that tag in there now my tag is in here and I will show you this it's not going to pull up okay it's not going to pull up until uh, like on my HMI application like if I have my alarms and event screen so in this instance uh, like if you have uh, an alarms and events screen let's see where I have this one in this application uh, alarm screen right here if you have the standard, and I'll show you this, if you have the standard alarms and events summary, right, if that you're using that, you're going to need to actually add, either A, add the uh, uh, filter in here for that. If you're using filters, your subscriptions and stuff like that, or either set the filter or the class, right? I'm not using any classes in this, so that, that my system would automatically detect that. Okay, but keep in mind, if you are using an, a, a tag right here, this class matters, right? So let's just say for, for the instance, the this screen that I had right here was looking for a specific class and only that class. And it would not display this default right here that says in alarm, right? I would have to set that alarm and change the class. I can change the class to, this would be, uh, a pump alarm so we'll just say pump or we'll just say batching alarms maybe that's the class we have we put in there right and then in here you would see the, the case of this having you know batching alarms right the class right here in the instance of what we did we could have this name batching right so batch batching and then we'll have the class and then we'll add criteria and says okay equals to or contains and then we'll put uh plus batching our batch alarms right we call that batch alarms right here you can see that 
So some, sometimes you would have a class equal to that class is what I'm explaining to you right here. Personally, I didn't have that in my system, but make sure this matches perfectly with what you have right here, all right, on your filters. Make sure that matches perfectly. And, and don't equals to, I always do contains because it's just, it's easier to read, all right? So if, if I do get this alarm in my system now, it will populate on my legacy tag alarm or my, my actual uh, alarm screen right here, my alarms and event screen. So the alarms and event summary, again, this is what you're doing. You're converting, right? You're converting, let's just not save that. Um, you're, but you're converting your legacy tag alarm or your legacy tag HMI tag alarm right here. It will still be there, right? Let's open the, my tags up. It will still be there, right? But it's no longer going to be used. So you can actually, at this point, delete this and have it, um, you know, no, no longer be used. However, if you are using this and you try to delete it while it's it's uh, an active system, it's not going to allow you to delete it. You need to disconnect all your connections and then delete it. Like right now. I can delete this very easily because I'm not connected to my actual system. My system is not running, right? I'm not running, so I can actually do that. But just keep in mind, if you are connected to a system and this tag is actively connected to a live system, you're not gonna be able to, to utilize that. So you're gonna have to just disconnect this, the system, whether you be uh, you know, separating your, your redundancy or your pr primary from a secondary, or just merely just separating the system for uh, a brief period of time from the connections to the PLC to allow you to do so. And then no worries, this will always work as far as this goes. It's gonna give you the alarm um, message that you already had in the legacy tag. Are you in the legacy tags right here? It's already gonna have that message in there. And if you wanted to have a display, the display would have already been there too. So it does do a full conversion of everything you're doing. Now I do know that there's probably gonna be some questions when it comes to understanding exactly how to do this on a large scale. Just keep in mind, it's very simple and keep like very, very, very simple to use, right? Very easy to use. So let's close this, we'll save. Um, again, when it comes down to it, um, we're taking our alarms, right? Our alarm legacy tag alarm database and we're converting it over to our new system, which is going to be our FT view alarms and events setup. And this will work perfectly without any problems whatsoever. It will pick up and, and again, the only key things you need to realize is, let me pull this back up in my uh, alarm screen, is you need to realize what you're using. So if you're going to be uh, utilizing a alarms and events summary page, to pull and populate that that those new tags you just made. So right here, the new tags you just made right here, this needs to be utilized with the alarms and events summary page, okay? You can no longer use the legacy tag alarms, okay? The, if you use the legacy tag alarm um, screen, that screen is no longer gonna, it will still work if you still have that tag in there, but those screens are no longer going to work in fact talk 12 or above so you have to be using this new screen which again when you see the properties all it is is an alarms and events summary okay so just go into your hmi systems and you would add uh, alarms and events set up and you would do summary right here and you, you would populate that in there really easy to use it's really a simple tool so don't worry about that it's very easy to set up again i'm i wasn't using any filters at all but you can use filters is what I was trying to explain. That, that gets into a very complex topic. And I wanna make sure you understand though, when you go down, if, you're, if it's your first time converting over, it may be best to use zero filters whatsoever and to get everything converted and then come back and put filters in there later. What do I mean by filters? I'm talking about display filters right here, okay? You see, I don't use any, mine work perfectly fine. I had, if you've seen all my prior videos where I built that, you could see that I had at least 15 alarms in there and they all work perfectly fine. Um, those That did utilize the ALMDs instead of using the uh, legacy tag alarm. But I wanted to show you how to convert that though, because again, it's, a, it's important and imperative that you understand the 
that message is not just a default message. Don't ignore that message. Go ahead and convert your tags over, double check them, make sure they're working. And then after they're working, um, and you feel like they're working, like build it on a separate system or something, come back and then delete this, your, your tags, then, or uncheck the box. For one, to, to test everything, you can just merely uncheck the box. And if the, all your tags work, then you can come back and delete this, right? You can come back and um, delete the whole folder, really. But right here, you can accept, come over here. So no, it's no longer a, an alarm. It's a, still a tag in your system, but it's no longer an alarm. So if we were to come back and actually close our system down and you open it back up, let me show you this. Now I should not get an alarm, right? I shouldn't get that pop-up window. Let's just see if I do though, because <clears throat> I'm actually kind of curious about that. So let's see if I get that pop-up window. I shouldn't be in that I converted that tag from uh, uh, an alarm just to a standard tag. Right, standard tags are still completely uh, usable. So let's see if I actually get that alarm. And I did not get that alarm. So the key thing, I would say the key takeaway, and hopefully you stayed and watched the, the whole video right here. Key takeaway is moving this alarm right here. If you wanted to test it on a live system, after you've built your system, your AFT view alarms right here, after you built everything, if you want to test it, come over here and test your system, make sure their tags are working. All you have to do is come over here to your alarms and every one of your alarms, just uncheck the box and hit accept. Now that will temporarily make sure um, your tags will no longer work on the old system, the legacy system, but it will work on your alarms and events summary. So you will have to replace that screen. Just keep that in mind. So. That will, hopefully you stuck around and seen that, that little tip right there on uh, getting rid of that little pop-up window and also too on how to convert everything and test everything because it's a very complex scenario and it can be very daunting if you did not have a very um, easy to understand uh, visual like I just I was trying to employ in this video. Again, I do know that that can leave you with some questions, but again, reading through that article would have left you with a lot of questions, the article they gave you on the pop-up. So hopefully that did help, and we'll see you guys on the next one.